We welcome you to the 11th National Youth Parliament, which takes place on Monday, October 28th, 2013. Please remain standing for the prayer. Almighty God, creator of the universe and all that is in it, we graciously thank you for your numerous blessings restored upon us. As we gather here today, as future leaders of this great land, we look towards you for guidance and wisdom in our deliberations during this 11th sitting of the National Youth Parliament. We ask for wisdom in governance, strength for all our leaders, guidance in our schools, and healing of wounds of separation and division. Open our hearts to accept the truth and demonstrate love always, so that we and all citizens of this nation can live in harmony. Amen. Amen. Announcements by the speaker, papers. Questions to ministers. Request for leave to move the adjournment of the House on definite matter matters of urgent public importance. Statements by ministers, personal explanations, introduction of bills, motions relating to the business or sittings of the House, and moved by a minister or parliamentary secretary, public business, private business, motions. The Honorable Leader of the House. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I have the honor to lay on the table the following paper, the report of the 10th National Youth Parliamentary Debate, 2012. Leader of the Opposition, Member for Lahokata. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I beg to move the following motion, standing in my name. Whereas Section 22, Subsection 1 of the Children's Act was inserted in 2000 to state that reasonable punishment in relation to a teacher does not include corporal punishment. And whereas there is now an upsurge of reported incidents of violence in our nation's schools. And whereas the government of Trinidad and Tobago ought to recognize the need for the nation's students and teachers to perform their duties in an atmosphere of discipline, safety, and security. And whereas there has been widespread outcry for the reintroduction of corporal punishment in our schools, be it resolved that the government revisit the Children's Act with a view to reintroducing corporal punishment to provide teachers with an additional method to counter violence perpetrated by students. Madam Speaker, before I proceed, allow me to define corporal punishment as given by UNICEF. It is the practice of using physical force to inflict, inflict pain, but not injury, as a means of punishment. Madam Speaker, in the simplest form, Section 22 of the Children's Act of 2000 states that a parent or guardian has the legal right to administer 
corporal punishment to their child or ward. However, a teacher is denied this right. Madam Speaker, this is a hindrance to teachers and takes away from their ability to effectively teach and administer discipline in our classrooms. Madam Speaker, in the discharge of teaching, teachers themselves depend on several disciplinary methodologies to ensure student compliance and conformity. Corporal punishment allows teachers to exercise discretionary punishments to ensure students behave themselves in the proper manner. This allows a higher level of discipline to be attained and ensures that teaching is more efficient in our classrooms. This is proven, Madam Speaker, by the research of Kerwin and Medler of 1998. These two famous psychologists say that the attainment of discipline is developmental and not obtained overnight. It is an externally imposed activity that results from a fear of being punishment. Madam Speaker, these two celebrated gentlemen clearly demonstrate the instrumental role corporal punishment plays in disciplining our children. Furthermore, Madam Speaker, I'd like to ask you, is it that we remove corporal punishment because we think we don't need it? Or is it a form of cultural imperialism? Do we seek to adopt the models of liberal education proposed by the Americas and other metropoles? Why must we forsake the model of education we ourselves have here in this great republic? Madam Speaker, there has been no local or even regional studies showing the effect of corporal punishment on students. We simply accept studies done by foreign personnel on their societies, and we seek to apply these generalizations to our great nation. How could this ever be logical? There are so many ways in which our society differs from theirs. Madam Speaker, we need methods that will work for us. And I tell you, these methods are not detention, not suspension, and definitely not whimsical projects such as Project Peace. Additionally, I ask you, what is the alternative to corporal punishment? It is the effecting of inefficient, time-wasting methods of discipline. The result of punishment should be increased efficiency, not more time wasting. Think about it. How much time do we waste in our schools behind trivial methods of discipline, such as writing reports, penance, or meeting with parents? Methods such as detention just put further strain on schools with already tight staffing arrangements. Corporal punishment provokes immediate change from students at once and it allows for the efficiency in the discharge of discipline. <laughs> Madam Speaker, I spoke with several deans and teachers across the country, and during my chat with them, I was able to gather that on average, two hours a day, two hours, 120 minutes, is wasted on disciplinary procedures that ultimately have no impact on students. Madam Speaker, this takes away from contact hours and productivity time in our classrooms. One dean even went as far to tell me. He said that during the days of corporal punishment, all they had to do was walk down the halls with the whip and the entire school would fall silent. They all told me that during the days of corporal punishment, students were far more well behaved and they had greater respect for administration as well as teaching staff. The deans also went on to say that it was merely the fear of being punished rather than the actual act of being struck itself. And Madam Speaker, I anticipate that there will be detractors to my administration insistent on the fact that teachers will abuse this power and go on to mercilessly hit our children. But it is this erroneous claim that has brought me to my final point. There will be ongoing training to ensure that teachers and administrators 
are well equipped in administering this punishment. I propose that there be mandatory seminars in which each teacher attends and will be trained in self-control, anger management, and other related matters. This could be done by the UE Psychology Unit to ensure proper principals are taught and teachers are well educated. The Ministry of Education and the member for Faisabad will reinforce this point, has already trained some 750 teachers across 10 secondary schools in anger and stress management. Obviously, this program will be, ex will be expanded to ensure all teachers are trained before corporal punishment is implemented. Additionally, Madam Speaker, our children will not be flogged like slaves. This is far beyond the intended parameters of corporal punishment. There is civility in corporal punishment, and each teacher will be made to understand this point. <laughs> Madam Speaker, I hope I have outlined the vast benefits to be derived from the reintroduction of corporal punishment in our nation's schools. It will certainly cut down on the violence seen and ensure a safer Trinidad and Tobago. I thank you. In accordance with standing order 29-1, the motion requires a seconder. Madam Speaker, I beg to second the motion and I reserve my right to speak. Honorable members, I will now propose the question for debate. The question is, whereas section 22, subsection 2 of the Children Act was inserted in 2000 to state that reasonable punishment in relation to a teacher does not include corporal punishment. And whereas there is now an upsurge of reported incidents of violence in the nation's schools. And whereas the government of Trinidad and Tobago ought to recognize the need for the nation's students and teachers to be able to perform their duties in an atmosphere of discipline, safety, and security. And whereas there has been widespread outcry for the reintroduction of corporal punishment in schools. Be it resolved that the government revisit the Children Act with a view to reintroducing corporal punishment to provide teachers with an additional method to counter the violence perpetrated by students. The Honorable Minister of Education, Member for Faisabad. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I must say that I am completely appalled at the fact that the opposition is debating this motion, debating a motion of a practice that was abolished almost 13 years ago. All of this about cultural imperialism is all well and good, Madam Speaker. But Madam Speaker, to parallel the recent rise in crime and violence and the reintroduction of corporal punishment, Madam Speaker, is like saying, because I stopped hanging my clothes out to dry on the line in the backyard, that is why my automatic dryer stopped working. <laughs> Madam Speaker, what does one have to do with the other? Now, I would say that there is sufficient evidence to, to suggest that the rise in crime and violence has been happening even before corporal punishment was abolished. You know why, Madam Speaker? Because we have a saying in this country, whenever the United States sneezes, Trinidad and Tobago does catch cold. It's called technology and globalization, Madam Speaker. That is why we have a rise in crime and violence, not because we got rid of corporal punishment. There was a reason we got rid of it, Madam Speaker. If we go back to this barbaric and this old time way of thinking, it's like a dog going back to their own vomit. Madam Speaker, why would we want this government to behave like a dog going back to their own vomit? Madam Speaker, that is regression and that is not what this government stands for. It stands for progress. The Honorable Member for La Hocketa stated that there are no local studies or no regional studies that, you know, give proof of corporal punishment here having a negative effect. 
But I, on the contrary, I say, Madam Speaker, that there is sufficient studies from the Caribbean Journal of Cultural Studies. Note the word Caribbean in it. Madam Speaker, there is evidence in the literature that true discipline is fellowship, but psychologically is the positive approach of nurturing behavior. Richard Kerwin, 1988, for instance, posits that discipline must be inculcated with dignity. That is taking into account the dignity of the human person. Further evidence in the literature reveals that there is a relationship between corporal punishment and many negative effects, such as aggression, aggressive behavior, retaliation, violence, and low self-esteem among pupils. Few studies support the use of corporal punishment to achieve positive discipline in students. Madam Speaker, if that is not enough regional evidence, I don't know what is. I also want to ask, Madam Speaker, did the opposition really take into account the consequences and the negative factors that may be introduced if it is we reintroduce corporal punishment back into the school system? They say, Madam Speaker, that they will train the teachers to administer corporal punishment effectively. But it is a fantasized, utopian way of thinking, Madam Speaker, and this is not a utopia. This is not an ideal society because we are not ideal persons, and ideal persons do not have ideal behavior. You can train 500 teachers, but the one teacher that steps out of line, what then? Will we sue them? Will we charge them? You can't hit the child. The child is hit, and that is that. So how are we going to deal with that? We also have to take into consideration, Madam Speaker, as I said before, Honorable members, the speaking time of the Honorable Member for Faisalabad has expired. Madam Speaker, I'd like to move that the speaking time for the Honorable Member be extended by a further three minutes. Honorable Members, the question is that the speaking time of the Honorable Member for Faisalabad be, be extended by three minutes. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any against? The ayes have it. Member, you may continue. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'll try to keep my remaining points in brief. Madam Speaker, violence breeds violence. Most high school children will tell you that if you hit them, they'll take their licks and they'll move on with what it is they have to do. What will corporal punishment do for them? And I must stress on emotion at hand, Madam Speaker, because it seems to me that the opposition did not read the motion fully. It says that we want to reintroduce corporal punishment as an additional method to combat the violence but they are emphasizing it as if it is the only one. And Madam Speaker, what kind of society will we have then? We will be breeding chaos and anarchy where anybody could hit anybody. We need to deal with children with reasoning, understanding, and love, not physical punishment, Madam Speaker. The systems that we have in place, Madam Speaker, they will discredit it from now till kingdom come. But I say, Madam Speaker, that instead of focusing on blanketing the problems with another method, we need to fix the ones that we already have here because this government is not in the business of blanketing problems. Anything that causes physical or psychological harm is unacceptable, Madam Speaker. And as Minister of Education, I will not allow anything that will harbor any kind of abuse or encourage any kind of misconduct among teachers and students in my schools. So I say, Madam Speaker, that this government is against reintroducing corporal punishment into the school systems. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The member for Talparo. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Can I remind this esteemed chamber of the horrific year of 2000? Another reason I call it horrific is simply because here we are, yet again, in 2013, because violence in our schools have driven our children to become murderers. Am I voicing an opinion? No, Madam Speaker, it is a fact. Let me lay down some facts for you, Madam Speaker. 
On April 18th of 2012, according to the Newsday, a Pleasantville Secondary School, a 14-year-old first former was attacked by two students while simply making his way around the hall. The student had to be hospitalized due to a fractured skull. According to The Guardian, on the 27th of May 2013, at Waterloo High School, a 14-year-old third former was stabbed to death by a 16-year-old fifth former in his back, wrist, and abdomen. Stabbed to death, Madam Speaker. In another incident, on October 1st of 2013, according to the news there at Canopia Secondary School, a schoolboy committed the violent act of stabbing a schoolgirl, a first form girl brutally stabbed in her left leg and arm by a second form male. Madam Speaker, all of these things happened after corporal punishment was removed. And if I continue to list out all of the violent acts in our nation schools after corporal punishment was removed, I will be here for the entire day. Now, the government would like for us to think that they would have put certain measures and sanctions in place. But here we are in October of 2013 having to deal with murder in our schools. Now, the first sanction that comes into mind is the mentoring project. I was a member of that at one point in time. And might I say that it was, um, it was something. Inadequate training and no follow through. It kind of reminds me of our current government. Another sanction that was put into place was expulsion, suspension, and detention. But Madam Speaker, before the year of 2000, students did not know what expulsion was. Students of today, however, view suspension as a glorified holiday for deviant behavior. Less school and more time for liming, and they're using the very laptops that the government gave to them to look at pornographic material and use Facebook. Standing order 36, section, subsection 5, imputing improper motives. Overrule, member, you may continue. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Another grand idea was together we light the way, but clearly the way that is being lit by this light is the way to destruction for our nation's schools. Madam Speaker, even after all of that, we've reached to the point where metal detectors have to be introduced in our school. Metal detectors, Madam Speaker, along with the prominent need for safety officers, guidance counselors, and security guards in each school. Have you ever heard the saying, spare the rod, spoil the child? Because, Madam Speaker, indeed, indeed, our children have been spoiled. The government thinks that corporal punishment is barbaric, but the opposition is here to say that the old ways worked. I'm sure his former excellency, A.N.R. Robinson, would have gotten some good Castara lickings back when he was a child. <laughs> or perhaps the... Thank you, Madam Speaker. Honorable Member for Karen Central, if you will allow me to finish my point, I would show you the relevance. Madam Speaker. Honorable Members, the speaking time for the Honorable Member for Talparo has expired. Madam Speaker, I beg to move that the speaking time for the, for the Honorable Member be extended to a further three minutes. Honorable Members. The question is that the speaking time of the Honorable Member for Talparu be extended by three minutes. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any again? Aye. The ayes have it, Member, you may continue. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I was on the point of the great leaders of our nations. Now, I'm sure the Honorable Chief Secretary of the THA over London would have given out some good shots to the Tobago students when he was a principal. Or perhaps His Excellency Mr. Carmona can attest and share stories later today when we in his presence of a good whooping he would have gotten out of Santa Flora Primary School. And I'm sure that he's thankful for that whooping today because it made him into the disciplined leader of our nation. <laughs> Madam Speaker, you see, clearly the old ways worked. I don't know how the government can call themselves the leaders of our nation and clearly not see what is laid right in front of them. Perhaps if the government had gotten a good whooping with his excellency, they might stop opposing the sole sanction that is known to work. The United Nations Development Report for 2010 to 2011 said that 11,000 students were suspended from schools. Madam Speaker, but the problem of violence is still prominent today. 
The vice president of the Trinidad and Tobago's Unified Teachers Association stated very clearly in 2012 at an urgent intervention of the government, and this is a direct quote, Madam Speaker, there was a marked increase in violence in schools following the ban of corporal punishment. Madam Speaker, it was stated. It was not alleged, it was not questioned, it was stated with facts and figures, Madam Speaker. The Education Minister of Trinidad and Tobago says that 11,000 students were suspended. But 